Might, might carry on, Gene, with uh, your part now. We'll come back to the questions and please do keep them coming in. Uh, please uh, just send the questions in and we'll might have an address at the end of this webinar and also post as well. So keep sending them in. Uh, Gene. Terrific. Uh, thanks, Peter. Look, I just wanted to start by acknowledging that I know in this group there are some pretty experienced sport educators. So I'm approaching this, this from the point of view of um, a bunch of colleagues getting together and sharing ideas. Um, your comments are gold, so keep them uh, coming in and thank you for that. Um, what we want to do now is uh, just set the scene with a couple of questions. So the first one is, um, or the first point to note, is that every group is different and we need to uh, fine tune our approach. And I'll have a few words to say about that. And then the other thing uh, is that um, the learning objective uh, is important. In any course or presentation, you're going to have a whole range of outcomes that you want to achieve. And uh, we're going to need to um, perhaps uh, zero in on, on that in a little bit more detail. And then what I want to do, I've got five or six, I can't remember how many tips, things that, that I use, but I know if we add yours, the audience's tips will probably have a hundred of them. So I'm just going to share a few of those. And uh, right at the end of that, um, uh, for the non-believers, we might just address um, a few of the things that do concern people about this approach to facilitation. So Peter, with the next slide, um, we asked two questions and the first of those is the one about um, uh, every group uh, being different. And you can see there um, a graphic that uh, shows that um, in any uh, cohort of learners, you'll have novices, you'll have developing and, and other learners who have reached mastery in their particular field. And, and we as individuals may be a novice in one and we may be, um, my screen has just gone into sleeper mode. So that's uh, just bear with me there. So um, we may be in more than uh, one of those categories. So in the case of a novice, um, uh, a novice in a sports sense um, would be low on knowledge, skills and experience that would be down, but they may come to the table with a lot of um, uh, general life experiences and maybe, and maybe experiences from another sport that are quite well developed. So in that case, um, what we want to do is uncover what they already know and help to fill the gaps. At the other end of that spectrum, at the mastery end, we expect um, those people to have a lot of uh, skills and knowledge and experience. And so we'll set up um, facilitated situations where there's a lot of peer um, sharing. We may um, stimulate um, some out of the box thinking. We may bring a guest in from another field um, and we might get them to apply things in a, in, a, in a new and not novel way. So if you could move Peter to the next slide. That second question is really one about um, learning outcomes. And the one thing I want to focus on here, we, we could talk for ages on this, but it's an age old challenge in sport. How do we get the theory to support the practical? How does the theory make us more competent at uh, doing things? And so that's the challenge I want to address. And you've guessed it, um, I've got a three point plan for this. And in step one, and Peter, it is, it is the same slide. So I'm going, just going to ask you to bear with me with these uh, three points. Um, the first is, and John alluded to this, start with the end in sight. Um, what competency, whether it's um, on the field competency or a planning competency are you aiming towards? That's number one. Number two, and you'll need to go to the kitchen and get a sieve, My, mine's under the sink, um, because what I want you to do is filter through all the potential underpinning knowledge that might support that, that destination, that end point we want to get to. And we're going to filter knowledge, the stuff we want to keep, that'll be the need to know stuff, um, we're going to filter that out from the nice to know stuff. 
Um, and this is a little um, checklist we can use. Um, is that can we make a plan with the in information? Um, can we say something to uh, a, a, an athlete or a, another official on the field? Um, or can we use the information to demonstrate something? So uh, that's uh, our approach. And um, once you've done that, once you've got a destination, once you've filtered the information, then um, it's really about saying, how do I use some of those things that John has been talking about um, to facilitate a, a session? So that's my opening bit. Um, the next bit um, really takes us through some, um, some things that you can try. And the first of those already up on the screen is challenge early. It might be a self-reflection, it could be a quick test, it could be a question and answer, it could be reacting to a case study, it could be looking at a video. Whatever it is, it's avoiding throwing the book at them. Now that approach may seem counterintuitive. It's not how I was educated. How I was educated was to go into a room and see a whole lot of stuff on a whiteboard or a blackboard uh, and write it down and uh, come to grips with that. So what we're saying is challenge early. Then, um, and again, as John was saying earlier, you'll, you'll make a judgment about where people are at. You can then drip feed and delay information. It might be some new stuff. It might be reinforcing what they've already reacted to, or it might be some correcting stuff if, if, that, if that needs to be the case. But we're very, very selective about that, that drip feed. Then what we do is we cull the information. I've already touched on this. Um, you know, the three star stuff, the two star stuff, the one star stuff. We want to layer the information and the three star stuff is the stuff that we're going to give our main focus to. And then the next point, Peter, if it's uh, able to come up, the next dot, dot point, I hope there's another one, is in the good old Aussie tradition, it's uh, allowing learners to have a go. Um, and for those of you with, with a background in coaching and particularly in team sports, you'll be familiar with the game sense approach where you get kids with minimal instruction into having a go into playing a game. Or in an individual sport, what you might do is perhaps pro provide a, a laminated card, it's got some content, and what you want them to do is arrange that content and, uh, you know, to um, to focus on how they would deliver the content, and that becomes the, the, the whole point of it. We talk about scaffolding, that's a sort of an educational term. It's really the le Lego blocks. It's those um, bits and pieces of information at just the right point in a, in a, a learner's journey to, uh, to help them. Um, and then the final point is um, we provide what I've called here dig deeper opportunities. Um, when I said we layer the information or give it three stars, two stars, one star, I don't mean we necessarily throw the two stars and one stars in the bin. What we do is we might sort of put them somewhere else. It might be a link on a website or it might be a resource you come back to later. Interestingly, some of the one star and two star um, resources, um, at a later date, they may become three star because the learner is consolidated, is a bit more confident and wants to dig deeper. So those are my um, uh, little um, techniques that you can try. And just to round off this uh, section, and, and it is to say this facilitation business is one of a number of tricks in a toolbox. We're, we're not saying this is the only thing you can do, but the first point um, really is the one that John, I think has um, handled so well is really respecting the learner and, and the group. They come to the table with general and sport um, knowledge. And our job is to uncover. I like this word uncover. Um, we often talk about covering the syllabus. We've got to co cover the, the syllabus. And what I'm the challenge I'm throwing out to people, it's really about uncovering and with learners, letting them get a bit kind of revved up and excited about learning and drawing stuff out of learners. So we uncover and we help to fill some gaps. So that's that's my, my response to that first thing. I want to listen to an expert 
not my peers. The second one is, I'll just say ditto to that. The second dot point as it comes up is what would a novice in a course know? Well, if it's well facilitated, we provide a bit of scaffolding and uh, we do um, guide the learning. The third dot point, as I'm coming to an end with this, um, is what about wrong and dangerous suggestions? Um, and it's, it is important that we don't trivialise the fact that in sport, there are safety, liability, risk management issues. Um, with some information, we can point to resources. It's on a web or it's in a PDF or it's in a book or what, what have you. If it's absolutely must three star stuff, um, stuff that you must do, we can do that in a facilitated way in a course. Um, and uh, alternatively, what we might do is say, look, we're going to introduce you to some let's say child protection in this course, but what we also want you to do is a play by the rules course. So that's a separate course and we don't get too bogged down in this one. And the last point, and this is where I sign off guys, is, you know, people say anyone can facilitate what a cop out, where is the expert? Well, 31% of you said that uh, facilitation was perhaps your thing. So, so it, it is a learned skill. And yes, it does take some practice, but it's not Mickey Mouse stuff. It's not Mickey Mouse, because you've got to be both a subject matter expert, perhaps a bit in disguise, bit of stuff in the back pocket there, and good at bringing um, stuff out of other people. So all I want to say to you is good luck.